All right, we're going to keep the intro short and sweet. Welcome to Dream Per Diem's Worst Enemies in Elden Ring. Starting off with dragons. We decided to add dragons to the list, not because they're hard or anything like that. Most because they're kind of lame to fight. You would think fighting a dragon would be some like grand old fight, but no, it just kind of boils down to you being a glorified nail clipper and whacking away at its toes for ages. Then after beating your first dragon, you go to yourself, you know what, maybe the other ones might be a little bit different. But no, they're all the same fight, but in different shades of color. You got a blue one, you got a pink one, and don't even get me started on the rewards. It's kind of lame that you go through this trouble fighting a dragon, and you're only rewarded if you are running a faith build. If you're running melee or intelligence, you can just kind of take a hike. But that said, next on the list is birds. No, not those guys. These guys. I'm a bird. Man, honestly, fuck these feathered freaks. Typical from soft fashion, they decided to take a normal animal, a bird, and decided, you know what? You'll be funny if we just made it really annoying to fight against. Pretty much like the second you enter Stormvale Castle, is your introductory course to Flying Falkyrie 101. You're immediately greeted by some birds with fucking sword feet that you can't reach unless if you're running magic or you have a bow and arrow. And then later on, you see a bird that's working for Al-Qaeda, I guess, because it just blows you up immediately, calling you an infidel. Yeah. And fast forwarding to Fair Missoula, there's that one section with the dragon shooting lightning at you from afar. But that's not even the scary part. The scary part is the sheer amount of Stormhawks they put in there to fuck with you for no reason. Why? I am more concerned about a regular bird than I am of a fire breathing, lightning shooting dragon. Only, only in a Souls game. Then jumping around, we head over to Castle Soul. And that one sucks so much. It basically feels like you're in a PvP match. The bird dodging all of your attacks, mashing R1, and spamming catch flame. The only thing the bird is missing now is like a flask or two to chug while you're fighting it. And speaking of Castle Soul, next up is... Spectral Knights. Oh boy, the ghost dudes. They have this special ability to pop out of thin air to jump scare you. And then listen, the first time I was not prepared for it at all. At the same time they're doing that, the tiny guys are shooting you with their annoying little arrows just to tickle your patience. And if you like it to meet these guys, be ready for three scary versions. Halbit Builder, Sword and Shield Guy, and Dual Sword Chad Guy. They all very quick on their frost attack and to stagger you. And they do crap lot of damage with their regular attacks. But the most trouble I had is with the Dual Sword Chad Guy. That has a 9 killer hit combo. Wait, wait, let me repeat. A fast 9 killer hit combo. For our fellow weeps out there, he will also teleport behind you and hit you with the nothing personal kid. The Newtonian Menace. The Physics Fiend. The Quantum Peril. That's right, it's gravity. If you're a Souls veteran, then you're no stranger to gravity, that son of a bitch. Or if you're not a Souls veteran, you'll get pretty used to it fairly quickly due to the open world nature of the lands between. You see that seemingly not so high cliff? Seems like a safe enough drop, right? Well, guess what? It's not. It is so hard to gauge what is a safe drop and what is not a safe drop in this game. And like, why? Why, FromSoft, did you add platforming sections to this fucking game? Do you know how many tries it took me to get down to Jarburg? Or going up the Divine Tower to the Foreskin Apostle? And for the creme de la creme of BS platforming, was whatever the hell you want to call that at the Church of the Forsaken. Ironically, you're trying to reach the bottom to meet with the three fingers for the Frenzy quest line, but that jumping section alone gave me Frenzy IRL. No wonder Vike went mad coming down here. I don't even think Melania had this many bloodstains. Gravity, you theoretical bitch. You rock lobster! 
Crustacean Rapid Auto Panzer, aka Crap. The attack will ass blast you like a bidesset with the max setting until you alt F4, and your poor torrent will be annihilated in one or two spits of goo. In Sewer's area I've been to, they have imps that play jokes on you and just knock you off to the pit of crap. And surprise, surprise, they will hydro pump you into, you guessed it right, Alt F4. <laughs> After we beat the game, we still have no idea on how to reliably kill them. We did take a revenge on them, of course, relegated to just eating their brethren in front of them to feel superior. Take that, you big crap. And now for some dishonorable mentions. Fingers butthole. Jazz hands. I think it's time to blow this scene. Get everybody in the stuff together. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. And numero uno, we got the worst enemy in Elden Ring, the Ulcerated Tree Spirit. Fuck you. How many times did the devs have to copy and paste this enemy for every other dungeon, man? With how crappy the camera is in this game, you can't even see any attacks, and it's just a close-up of a ball sack the entire time. And of course, this guy has a fucking grab attack, and that grab attack has the worst fucking hitbox ever. You try to dodge it, ah, no, look at that, you teleport it right into its mouth. And you think this is annoying? Wait until you meet the fucking putrid tree spirit. The same thing, but now we have Scarlet Rot in the mix. Wait until you have to fight the Rot version and a pool of Rot for Millicent's side quest. What the fuck? Well, thank god we only have to fight one at a time, right? Right? Guys, right? Alright, so if you made it this far into the video, I'd like to say thank you. So, um... I'm Trim. Hey guys, I'm Dima. And we're pretty new to like doing this YouTube stuff. This is our very first like edited video. We're just two homies who decided to make a YouTube channel just to kind of like stave off the boredom of everyday life. And with that said, this has been Dream Per Diem. Peace out. Peace out, guys.